scan to one half parsec. On screen, weapon droid manager. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. For now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stuart. <laughs> it's only me. So... David hasn't actually joined us yet. Uh, sorry, Scarecrow hasn't actually joined us yet. It's confusing when there's two Davids. I have joined us. Scarecrow hasn't yet. Um, he is currently doing a thing and will be joining us later on in the show. So, um, yeah, he'll he'll call in. Sorry, talking to Amy in the chat room. If it sounds like I'm talking to nobody, it's only because I'm talking to Amy in the chat room. Hello, Amy. No, you talk to yourself as well. Don't deny it. I, I, I actually talk to me all the time. It's, it's really unsettling. But you get that sometimes. Do you, do you respond back? That's the worry. Oh, when I'm at work and I'm bored, I have entire conversations with me. Okay, anyway. First up... Um, Amy, you're going to have to... We, we, we can't call you. We don't have you on our Skype. <laughs> Otherwise, we would. Um... You're going to have to add us on Skype and message us and we'll call you in or get uh, Scarecrow to add you when he gets here. Uh, sorry. Anyway, on to the topic. We start. I just wanted to start off by um, with some very, very sad news. We've been informed that um, Monty Ohm passed away last weekend. About the same time we were actually on the air. Um, we're, yeah... We're really sad by this news, but Stuart actually has a little something he wants to say on the matter. Yeah, um, I'm part of a group uh, called, uh, known as Rooteeth. They are uh, the Australian contingent of Rooster Teeth fans. And what is going to happen uh, this Sunday at the... I'm probably going to get this wrong because I've never been there. Mida Lily Community Centre in Fortitude Valley is that we're going to have a Monty Tom. Okay. So we're going to... We're going to uh, get together and watch uh, probably just all of Ruby just to sort of celebrate uh, Monty's life and his great work. That sounds awesome. Make sure you take lots of photos for us I'd, um, so I can whack them up on Save Sci-Fi. So. Yeah, we'll do. Yep, sounds good. All right, anyway, um, we're effectively just filling time until Scarecrow turns up. Oh yeah, random note, posted a, a picture up on Save Sci-Fi. This is actually, yes, it is a thing. Technically, Mr. Squiggle is sci-fi. He is from space. It is a kiddie show. I remember he watching it when Mr. I was... Mr. Squiggle, lots of fun for everyone. Stab, 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 stab. Anyway, um, if the, tonight's topic, main topic, is going to be what got us into sci-fi. And I wanted to mention that just because it's... Well, technically, we... It's not really sci-fi, but it is sort of sci-fi. I would have to say it is probably the first sci-fi I can genuinely remember watching, because I watched it when I was, like, three. And I could seriously not remember watching any other sci-fi before that. Because <laughs> everything was upside down. Upside down. No. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Oh, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> I think it always sounded like like the emperor. <laughs> so and that would be scary if that was actually voiced by the by um Palpatine. <laughs> actually, there's a funny video we need to do. We need to swap Squiggle's voice out for fucking Vader's for Vader's and swap the blackboards <laughs> out for Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, internet, that is your challenge. Go for it. Have fun, and please send me a link. Oh, that would be gold. We should put, we definitely put that on the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely share something like that. Anyway, that's not the point. So, what got us into sci-fi? I'll let you sort of start off first. What is the first thing outside of Mr. Squiggle 
that you sort of remember watching that was genuinely sci-fi in nature? Oh, this is easy. This is easy because I was three years old at the time, and it was Star Wars Episode Four. <sighs> oh, no, sorry, I fell asleep there for a second. Um... <laughs> uh, 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 my mum started me uh, one random uh, time. My mum decided to put it on. Yeah. And uh, I was about three at the time, and I was completely mesmerised. I think mainly because I wanted a giant laser sword. Yeah, no, no one blames you for that one. I can remember yeah. watching Star Wars when I was young. And, yeah, same sort of thing. Oh, we have, joining us just now, the one and only Scarecrow. Hi, right, guys. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> it's okay. No, I haven't missed much. You just it... missed me getting stabbed for singing Mr. Squiggle's theme song. <laughs> yep, that's actually a thing that happened. Um, anyway... So we're talking about what got us into sci-fi. And the, the question was, what is the earliest sci-fi you can remember watching? Are we going back to me or are we going to Scarecrow? Uh, no, Scarecrow. Earliest sci-fi I remember watching. Now, we, we, we already gave Mr. Squiggle an honorary mention because we all watched that as kids. But, I mean, as an adult, what do you remember watching? So, well, not as an adult, but... After that, when you're, when you're not, like, one. Uh, let's see. First one. That's the doozy. I'd have to say... I'm probably going to get castrated for this one. <laughs> Independence Day. It's either that or Back to the Future, whichever works. <laughs> Fair enough. See, I can remember watching a lot of stuff when I was younger. Like, one of the earliest memories I've got, and I know this was when I was in year two, so I really can't be that old. I can't remember how old I was in year two. It's a long, long time ago. But I remember watching Jurassic Park on TV, back when TVs were the size of your thumbnail. And <laughs> like, my girlfriend still has a really old TV, like the old small ones. Yeah, and I remember watching Jurassic Park, and me and my brother were watching it. We had one of those ping pong ball guns. What the hell is that? Hey. Ah, that's an Amy. Hello, Amy. Hello. Hello. Anyway, um, whoa, there's some feedback. Amy, you might want to mute the channel that you're listening to as we're getting epic feedback through the system. Which was used anyway. Yeah. Just cl- close the window that has the podcast in it and just leave Skype open. I, or mute I, the I, or mute the window. Yeah. That works. That works too. Um I'm just hope I'm not I might be echoing through the system. Anyway. Um Yeah. I've totally forgot where I was. Oh sorry, Jurassic Park. We had this ping pong ball gun, which most kids sort of have, and you sort of shoot this thing. It had like three or four ping pong balls, and it was spring loaded. And I remember watching Jurassic Park and shooting the ping pong balls at the TV. Whenever the T Rex was on TV, we'd shoot the ping pong balls. Now, my, my little brother, he's about a year and a half younger than me. He. <laughs> he would go out and get the ping pong balls after the gun was empty. And the rule was that he would then get. He would get the first shot and I would get to shoot the rest. Then he'd have to go get the ping pong balls. He decided to go out right in the middle of the scene where the T-Rex is attacking the kids. Sure enough, he's halfway across the room picking the ping balls up right in front of the TV. It turns and looks straight out of the screen and roars. (laughs) (laughs) At all. At this, at this point, he's barely old enough to sort of... He, he can walk and run, but he's not that old. He's, he's sort of preschool age, so sort of three or four. And oh. I, I... Put it this way. He's always been able to run fast. In that <laughs> instant, he became the Flash. <laughs> he was gone so fast that I didn't see him till the end of the movie. He was just gone. <laughs> no sign of him. I don't know where the hell he went. I didn't oh, care. I was watching oh. dinosaurs. I was like, screw this. It's not my problem. Okay. <laughs> well, he's running underneath his bed. <laughs> so, I've uh, got a funny story about um, 
from when I was watching Star Wars as a kid. By any chance, now, did C-3PO give you nightmares? Because that's understandable. <laughs> no, no, no. This involves a shopping center. Oh... Yay. So, after Star Wars, did I... Did C-3PO I... try and take you <laughs> home? <laughs> no. No, uh, after, after watching Star Wars, we ran up to the shops. I decided I wanted to call myself Luke Skywalker. Oh, God. I <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 wait. It gets better. I then decide to run away from my mum. So over over the uh, the intercom goes, "Would the mother of Luke Skywalker please come to concierge desk to pick him up?" <laughs> Did your mother know you were being called Luke Skywalker? Yeah, no, no, she long? knew. She knew it was me straight away. That happened for I'd say a solid few years. <laughs> well played. Well played. Is I don't know whether this would be an honourable or a dishonourable shout out to a mutual friend of ours who joins us at the anime club who oh. d- did not like his middle name so he got his name changed a couple of years back his new middle names are now Luke Skywalker wow is it any wonder we call him Sky wow <laughs> wait he, did he really do that yep <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna give him shit when I see him next. Spe- I'm dead. Spe- <laughs> probably be on Sunday. No, speaking so- of, I was just about to say, speaking of which, just really quick, uh, for those who are in Brisbane who are listening to this, this weekend is another anime night. It is hilariously on Valentine's Day. So it is not all of us. Val- it is not our normal night. So if you come to this one, be prepared. The random Deep level of anime are coming out, and we're all building model kits. Yeah, it's it's effectively a because it's going to be a room full of lonely guys. Oh, why? And me. <laughs> well, so, oh, and what made Amy's coming. Okay, and lonely guys and Amy. Um, <laughs> that all we got to do is just play with plastic toys. Because that doesn't sound sus what when I say it like that at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to bring beating. <laughs> oh god. Uh, okay. And there goes his mind straight into the gutter. <laughs> oh yep. yeah. Anyway, so moving on. First actual proper sci-fi series that you can remember watching. We've got James Stargate. has said uh, Next Gen. Um, Next Gen I didn't actually watch until a, actually last year, to be honest. Um, yeah, never really got into Star Trek. Um, for me, it was. And by the sound of it, it was also the same for Amy. It was SG One. I can remember, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm assuming That's Oz, Oz Twilighter. Yep, is Stuart. Jody. Yep. That's my missus. Hello, Jody. I'm not Hi. pretending to be Stuart. Don't wow, worry. I don't sound that high pitched. We, we we all love you too. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm surprised, because I thought her first one would have been Voyager, to be honest. Because yeah. I know she's a huge Voyager fan. My first proper series was Voyager. Huh. And don't think I didn't see that, James. <laughs> it's okay. So what we're going to do later on at some point, we're going to try and get James on, and James is going to be Voyager is bad, Dave, uh, Scarecrow is going to be Voyager is good, I'm going to be moderator, and Stuart is going to be fact checker. So we got, we plan on doing that at some point, and um, it's just whenever James is ready, we can we can get onto that. Um, but that's it's one hundred and ten percent up to him whenever he wants to join us. Um... <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn Spider words, boy! Oh, oh, this is this is going to be fun. Now I know what costume I've got to get coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Who pays into the IMDb anyway? Uh, it could be worse between I, men in black. Uh, <laughs> speaking on that, actually. Speak, speaking of men in black, my first DVD I owned, and I actually owned this before I owned a DVD player, because I got it when me and my dad went to a... Um, the hell did we go? I think we went to like a car car meeting or something, and there was like a convention for with all these new cars in it. And one of the desks there was one of the magazine was one of the magazine crowns, like Film Inc. or one of them. 
and it oh my ears what the hell was that sounds like someone's bouncing on a rubber ball or playing with um yeah i'm leaving Sorry, that yes. I'm leaving that my laptop. Ah, okay um anyway um, so the bonus for signing up for it was the first Men in Black movie DVD Extended Edition. Uh, sorry, DVD um, Limited Edition. It was a double print DVD, so on, it had a DVD disc on both halves of the disc. And on one side was movie de- was widescreen, on the other side was standard definition. And... Okay. It was, it's, it's one of those weird little things that I've got in my collection on my wall, and I love it just not because it was my first, but because it's got the coolest bonus feature I've ever seen on any movie. And I'd love to see this on every movie. And that was the video... Um, it's video commentary. So it's sort of like audio commentary, but you've got two little heads popping up in the middle of the screen underneath, and every now and again the movie will actually pause and highlight specific visual effects with little arrows and Sort of almost like a play-by-play in a football game. It's really, really cool, and I love it. I watch that thing all the time. Anyway, that's my... Oh, you two play fair in the comments section. <laughs> I am watching. Oh, this is going to end well. I, don't, so, I typed that because I didn't want to overshadow what you were saying. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Scarecrow asked me for the chat channel, so I gave to him. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> don't think I can stay Swiss now. Yeah, this, this, this is going to end badly. Anyway, um, so, Amy, your f- first one was uh, Stargate. I'm assuming that was back in the days when Channel 7 actually put it on at a normal time as opposed to when they decided to put it on at, like, yeah. midnight. And then... Yeah, I think I started yeah. watching it probably when it was between 7 to 7.30 or yeah. earlier. Yeah, it was... It, when it when it first came on, it was the first three seasons. They ran it from seven thirty to eight thirty, and, and the then four after that were in eight thirty to nine thirty. Yeah, and then um, and then it got bumped to from nine thirty to ten thirty, and then they started doing Stargate Atlantis because they had some BS contract that stopped them from releasing the DVDs until after the TV show had aired. So the we were effectively years behind in DVDs because Channel Seven refused to air the episodes. And when they finally said, well, screw you, Channel 7, we're just going to release the DVDs anyway, Channel 7 went, okay, well, we're going to air this thing at 1 o'clock in the morning. So it had, like, three watches. <laughs> three viewers, and it's like, what the hell? So, yeah. Oh, balls. <laughs> that, just yes. sounds like pre- that just sounds like everything early Marvel vs. Fox when it comes to Fantastic Four. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, let's 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 do an honourable mentions sort of section for this for shows that you remember watching as a kid. Shows like Silver Sun. I know we've talked about it a few times, but I, I still have a, there's still a, a little special place for Silver Sun in my collection. If and when they actually release it on DVD, which they won't because it's ABC. About Third Rock from the Sun. <laughs> yeah, Third Rock. <laughs> I remember Third Rock. Third Rock is great. All right, I'm going to chuckle in. It's not specifically sci-fi, uh, but it has uh, an alien in it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alf. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure if you were going to say <laughs> Alf, or there was a kiddie show that was on years and years ago, about the same time that Silver Sun was on, probably earlier. Had I can't remember. The, the only thing I can remember is the way the alien said hello was Yoki Objig or something similar. That's all I remember about the show. No, no, I was going straight for Alf. No, I can't remember what it was. It was, it was yeah, it was Alf very is weird. Funny. Yeah, he always, he loves cats. Well, oh. here's one for you guys. Uh, this should, should, somewhat should. dishonorable movie mention. Oh, here we go. Wing Commander. Nope. The, the, the sci-fi movie no one should ever watch. I want to underline that. Wing Commander <laughs> should be deleted from existence. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, purist. No, species. Oh, species. God. Species, yes. That's a good one. I'm not sure if that's an honourable or dishonourable mention, but it deserves a mention. <laughs> no, it does. Okay, how about this? Dishonourable mention. But I mention it because it was on straight after Silver Sun. Shadow Raiders, Planet Wars. Oh, 
Oh, oh the memories. I feel horrible. If you want to watch some of that this weekend, guess what's on the hard drive? Oh, I've God, no. No, I've got quite an interesting lineup for this weekend. <laughs> Wait, dude, you, you haven't raided my hard drive yet. It's got... Put it this way. What I was going to suggest to you when we got there, which I know we probably shouldn't be talking about in the podcast, but yeah, I don't care, no. um, <laughs> was each person chooses one show at random off sadly, the hard drive. Sadly, Doc has given me uh, card blanche for t- this week. So we're going to get at least one Gundam episode in there. Are you sure <laughs> not about five? Uh, I've chosen probably uh, the corniest Gundam episode possible. For the oh, simple no, fact, it's Valentine's Day. Oh no! Did you you would. Oh. Okay. Wait, what are you thinking, Stuart? Uh, um. No, you know, you probably probably different ones. What I'm thinking. Tell me what you're thinking. I was thinking the um. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Let's just leave this. <laughs> okay. Talk about later. We oh, have a special guest joining us right now. It is the one, the only, if I can find him on my add to call list, James Blood. Mr. I hate Captain Forgotten a Name. Janeway. Wow, that was bad. Even for me. <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Welcome, James. Welcome. He's currently dialing him, so he'll be on in a second. Um... Another dishonorable. You can't hear a thing, James. Um, yeah, Hang up and retry. Um. Yeah. You, you might have to. Oops. I'll try calling him again. Um. Yeah, James is having a few minor issues joining us. James, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, welcome to the podcast, sir. Right, well, I hear podcast here because I think it silenced the mixer. Um, yeah, you should silence the podcast on your end. And if you can, turn your microphone up just a bit. You're really, really quiet. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Right. Will I hear podcast through the Skype? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Yes, you will. Sorry about the chaos. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good. Oh, all good. Like it. Actually, it's my issue. <laughs> my volume was too loud. Yeah. We're... Congratulations. <laughs> so, so, so. Yes. Anyway, I love this whole producing a show as we go, adding people randomly because we can. <laughs> Why not? You may regret it because you're dead me now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Things are about to go down. <laughs> That's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. We like it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh, let's like shoot on your Voyager fandom then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh, boy. Okay. What we're going to do is we've got about. Half an hour. About half an hour or so left in the podcast. It won't. It won't last ten minutes. <laughs> so what I was going to say is, um, James, you're on the Captain Janeway's evil side. David gets to be on the Captain Janeway's good side. You've both got to make your case to me and Amy. So, right, also, uh, so we're the me, one... and, me and Amy are the, ja- are the, 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 the judges and. You're the... One important disclaimer. Uh, I have not watched Voyager in over a decade. I'm very, like, hazy on the details. I just remember a couple of things. So, sorry if my facts suck. Yeah, it's IMDb, all good. IMDb, as I, as I written, is just, you know, fucking useless. Either it doesn't <laughs> have episode synopses, or it's just, it's just like a fucking novel. <laughs> I've never watched it, so... Yeah, see, look at that. Good. I've, and I've only watched about a third of it, so I sort of got... I've, <laughs> I've watched all of... Well, then you're on my side, both of you. 
put, put, put no, it no, 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 found it in your heart. Stick with the stupid <laughs> shit that was on screen. No. Let's say what, what what happened was I watched all of Enterprise, all of the original series, all of Next Gen, and then by that point I was so full of Star Trek that I really couldn't handle it anymore. So I sort of walked away from Voyager temporarily. I'll get back to it sometime soon. <laughs> you know, best thing about uh, the Next Gen, actually, PNG had the best ending episode of all Star Treks. Yeah. Get history. It was. Awesome! It was perfect science fiction Star Trek, like crowning achievement. Yeah. And then they put on, uh, at least here, they started to air Voyager. I was like, what the fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> well, we got Deep Space Nine before Voyager. Yeah, we too, but uh, they, uh, they went into reruns. Well, Deep Space Nine and Voyager were being made at the same time. Voyager was yeah. the one that actually got to go and travel for the first six seasons of Deep Space Nine. You're on Ever a stuck on a... fucking space station, and it's all yeah. politics. It's nothing that's actually. This is Star going Trek. to turn. This is going to turn into DS Nine versus DS Nine haters. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I kind of love DS Nine because it's about characters. It doesn't focus on stupid shooter alien themes. That Voyager kind of pushed through. Uh, yeah, the contrast is actually a smart thing they did. Uh, they allowed people to choose between DS9 and Voyager because uh, Voyager was, you know, voyaging. And DS9 was stationary. It uh, dwelt into, as you said, politics, but it also built up characters like uh, Odo and Quark. Uh, that dynamic is, by the way, one of the most strongest things in Star Trek. It's very, very interesting friendship, hate ship, kind of. I'll, yeah, yeah. I, I'll pay that Deep Space Nine had great character development. I also agree that Voyager was very... It had no characters. No, it did. They were just took... slay. Yeah, four seasons. Yeah, true. It took four seasons before they started to develop characters. Sorry. It did. It took a while. But also, you've got to take into account... The idea behind Voyager was a return to Kirk. Yeah. The idea behind they were trying Voyager to get was... they were trying to get back more closer to the original series with under Kirk. I agree with yeah. you that Janeway was not the best captain. Ideally, she uh, should have been killed is, in the first problem or, is, second season. Problem is that uh, Kate Mulgrew, the actress, was too good at it. She was given really crappy, self-absorbed douche to play and she played it so well that she made me hate the stupid show. She was always look at any picture, look at any still shot from the series. She's always higher than anyone else. Just a tiny bit sometimes, but she's always towering over everyone. That's it's just psychological I'm the best here. Fuck you all. <laughs> I, I agree. Jane was not the right for some captain. reason. Janeway was not the right captain no, for Voyager. Actually, uh, well, the idea. When did, when did my when did my debate of Janeway is good, Janeway is bad turn into Janeway is bad, Janeway is bad? <laughs> Janeway is not bad. Voyager is. Look, the idea, the idea they vessel. had originally, the idea they had originally have Maki fuse with Starfleet on a faraway place where they can't call for their own backup was great, because uh, Chakotay, in spite of it com- being completely pointless in the actual Voyager run, ah. was originally intended to be a smart, experienced officer, and Janeway was supposed to be like uh, on her first captain assignment, I think. She was very on young, her very young, very, uh, very inexperienced uh, Starfleet having to manage person who is a brilliant tactician. That would be so awesome if it was Except directed Chakotay. by someone competent. Except Chakotay turned into the doormat yep. that Janeway walked on until he stopped sniffing up Janeway's skirts and started sniffing up Seven's skirts. <laughs> I'll agree, the only person on the Voyager command crew who actually deserved to be there was Tom Paris. 
Mainly because he's a Sierra Hotel pilot. Some of the shit that, they, that Voyager pulled off was not possible without Paris at the helm. Well, uh, just a heads up, we have temporarily lost James. We're not, not 100% sure why, but he has just dropped out. We are hoping to get him back as soon as we can to get this discussion back on the tracks, because I'm actually really enjoying it. Give me a second. I'm... Um... Yes. Technical, Sorry, difficulties. Having technical difficulties at this point in time. Please try Sorry, again uh, later. <laughs> and we have James back. <laughs> Something went really weird. Yeah, yeah. Every, uh, now, you, every now and again you, connect, you drop out. So Are you that's... connected by a Telstra? No. <laughs> what? Well, you guys didn't drop out. Oh, Telstra is one of our telecommunication companies here and it's absolutely have... horrible. I have very specific kind of connection. I have fixed IP and it's very, very fast, but it has a uh, own firewall which prevents some things. Some games actually yell at me because I can't fix it, so they want uh, me to open boards. I don't understand why. Yeah, that might be it. Skype just doesn't understand the security here. Sorry. Uh, I was saying that uh, Seven of Nine and Chicote kind of got together and married in one episode, I think. Not sure which one. Sorry, I just have to take this opportunity to say, if I could go back and be with any character from Star Trek, I'll give you one guess which character I would be with. It's not a hard Sarah contest. Sarah Reese. Seven of Nine, not a hard contest. Followed closely by, um, cool. what's-her-face that played the Vulcan in Enterprise. Um... I've forgotten that character's name now. T'Pol. T'Pol. T'Pol, yes. Close second. Oh, you mean the... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. TV show Enterprise. I was Giggity. thinking, what? Giggity gig. Kira yeah, Norris right. is actually a fantastic character, and because I kind of love B5, <clears throat> I see... The... <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> Uh, B5 and DS9 have very similar premise to a point where they actually had uh, probably same uh, source material. Yeah, well, they, they actually you can did. See the what, characters what, there. Yeah, what, what, what happened was um, the guy who made Babylon 5 actually went to the Trek guys and said, Look, this is an idea I've got. This is what I'm planning on doing with it. The Trek guys <laughs> said no. And I think it was about a year or so later, Deep Space Nine was announced, which was effectively Babylon 5. So, yeah, but uh, the which is also released before the S nine. Yeah, I know, but it, it's sort of why there's a bit of a jab at Star Trek at the end of Deep Space Nine with the establishment of the equivalent of the Federation, with the Interstellar Alliance. So, uh, the Federation was around for a freaking long time before the. I know. So I'm just saying that Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm well aware. I'm just saying at the you're end... Referring, you're referring to the alliance against the Dominion? Or no, 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 no. no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the alliance at the end of Babylon 5. And how they got uh, all the different yeah. races together. I might have said Deep Space Nine if I did... That was actually no, mid... You said Deep Space Nine, was... dude. I'm retarded. Yeah. You're we know. Uh, <laughs> B5, B5 had a couple of alliances. Uh, it started off with the League of Independent Worlds and... About midway through season three, I think they there was had a, uh, the Shadow Alliance, where they formed up with the Vorlons against the Shadows, and then there was the Alliance against yeah. Earth, and then eventually it was the Interstellar Alliance, which um, Sheridan was made president of, which was effectively not a president role because it didn't work that way. It just it was effectively king. That's a. I have a problem with later seasons of B5. It doesn't work on the sites I'm trying to watch it off. Like yeah. Season 3 halfway is as far as I can get. Because somehow someone keeps claiming copyrights. Damn it. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, Voyager. Voyager and proof that Janeway is in fact evil. Right. That Janeway took is like not... 20 minutes. David, is David, not... it is David. It is his turn to talk. He will get your turn in a second. I will let you know when it's All your right. turn. Sorry, uh, <laughs> she kind of, she kind of is. Uh, first thing we do is discover. Let me relevant to the plot. Uh, we discover that uh, half of her 
her crew died. Well, how come half of the Maki crew didn't die? It's smaller ship. Jadun is like... Uh, wow, that sounds like the crew villain. Uh, the ship, J Jadun, right? Uh, the one that Chikote has. Uh, smaller, should have weaker shields, but oddly enough, all 50 crew members survive. How the fuck does that happen? Because the Voyager is... Voyager is prototype, so no, but it, but I'm guessing that uh, no, Chainway did something. No, I'm um, to re on this one. Yes, David, it is your turn to talk. Okay. Step one, Voyager is not a prototype. She is a member of the Intrepid class. So if she was right. the prototype, but it's she new would ship. be the Intrepid. She is it's a new, new ship. ship. Yes, Jadun is not also... new ship. No. Jadun is built as a warship. It is specifically designed to take the fight to the Cardassians, who have got bigger ships and badder, more badass than they are. So it's literally designed to take more pounding. Voyager and the Intrepid class, by design, are science vessels. They're small, oh, fast, so, deep reconnaissance so Jadun, science special vessels. Jadun so Jadun is a warship. Is pre, it's pre, um, uh, what's the DS9 ship? Damn it! Defiant. Yeah, it's, it's basically defiant, but precursor of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, think, think. Yeah. Defiant. I don't think defiant was a science vessel. I think defiant was no. It was pure just warship. It, defiant. Defiant it was is designed a tactical, to kill Borg. Tactical warship. Yeah. 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 Voyager is a science vessel. She's meant to go on long Sorry, range. I had no long no range idea trips. about that. Right. And yeah. I had no idea about built for, it. Not built for heavy combat. She was sent into the Badlands because she, the Intrepid class is the most maneuverable class that Starfleet has next to the Defiant, and they're running a little short on Defiant classes due to the Cardassian War at this point. Yeah. Yeah, okay. James's turn to make his next statement. What the hell? Well, that's one zero for you. <laughs> uh, and, uh explosion of the probe, uh, caretaker's hub, or whatever you call it. Why did she have to shoot it? Why didn't she use her superior intrepid class and the shielding of the station, which I believe was still on? Uh, or why didn't she just set someone there or use timer or something? She effectively stranded, like, uh, what was it? 100 people? 150 people on the on the Delta Quadrant, right? In the Delta Quadrant for no reason, really. Yeah. Because she could. Uh, David, no. yeah, is it's now David's turn to rebut that point, just for fairness. Okay, this is where where Janeway's inexperience comes into play. I agree with you in most cases that Janeway was not the right captain for Voyager. I don't think she's evil, per se. She's just not the right person for the job that she was given. Hi. Uh, so, she's inexperienced. She's Whoa. fairly fresh off the out-of-command school. Voyager is her first command. Um, then she's thrown into the Delta Quadrant. She's lost. Doesn't have anything to fall back on but Starfleet protocols. On top of that, she's faced with the force of 20 ships coming at her one, which has already been proven to be a science vessel. Might be more advanced than them, but she can be whittled down by numbers at this point. She hasn't had the reinforcing and upgrades that they put through her over the seven seasons of the show. And don't forget, she's just been tossed across a literal galaxy, and she's still fixing it. It's not, exactly. Not, so not anywhere near 100% at that point. On top of that, she also has one weapon of mass destruction on board. And lo and behold, what weapon does she fire? The only thing guaranteed to get the job done to protect the people on the other planet from basically being turned into slaves, which is what would have happened had the Kazon taken the station. Kazon so was... are in the region of space for a long while. They know about this civilization because there's a beam going towards the planet all the time. Exactly, but they've got no way to get on board, and the caretaker set everything on board to self-destruct. Right, so... Wait. She shot a torpedo on the 
Gardaker station, didn't she? Yeah, because the Kazon, that, uh, the Kazon had already made it on board and disabled the self-destruct. Voyager right, and the Marquis crew so... had already scrambled their asses off there because the caretaker had said, I'm going to be self-destructing when I die. When my life signs end, I'm self-destructing the station. The Kazon I got on board remember. and... I can't remember got on board. there being more than one warship at the station at the moment. If she could, uh, if they could disable the self destruct, they could probably temper with the systems enough to make it operational. And so, who's How better equipped to temper? Who's better equipped to temper with uh, advanced unknown tech than, than Starfleet? But the, 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 the problem is the technology that they were facing was so far beyond them. It would Fine, be, but it'd be if like you can opening disable. up. Well, think of it this way: it'd be like opening up the heart of the TARDIS in Doctor Who, yeah. and that, pressing that random, happen, by the way. and pressing random buttons and hoping that you get home. That happened too. I'm, well, well, I'm well aware. Yeah. I'm well aware that that happened, but you, you know what I mean. It's so far yeah. beyond them that it's. It's not as simple as pressing a couple of buttons and... Yes, not, but not only back. that, but we've but also listen got the to this. They Voyager disabled a self-destruct. If you can do this, which is inherently safety precautions, really, you should not be able to do that if you don't understand the system at all. Don't tell me that Kazan have greater knowledge about no, systems of the caretaker. Thing. They shot the damn thing! Yeah. That you shouldn't be doable. <laughs> Come on, self-destruct is uh, safety precaution. You shouldn't be able to just shoot it off. Yeah, well, just don't forget, this is in a series where when a ship gets shot from something, even if the shields aren't penetrated, everything on the bridge has to explode. In the real world, that doesn't ever happen. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so well, yeah. we can't, we can't necessarily because, logic it too much, really. Because in Voyager and, uh, in fact, in entire... Star Trek, everything is still made in China. <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, there's one other thing to take into account. Right. Voyager lost most of its security crew members in the incident. Just to Voyager get has now... Wow. They're, red... <laughs> they're... they're the red shirts, they're expendable. <laughs> most, of their... most of their security expendable crewmen got killed. So they're now faced with a damaged ship integrating a group of rebels who are literally out to say fuck you Starfleet into their ship and also have to uh, fix the care t the array, fix their ship and defend it from 20 plus Kazon that were just on mm, that planet themselves. They have some they have some like distance between them and Kazon but fine. We're talking at least two months worth of work here. They're not going to be able to get it all done in the space of the 45 minutes to an hour the Kazon were going to take to arrive. Unless the Doctor turned right, up but, and started uh, to... You don't need to fix everything. You just need to erect shields of the array. So but... you need to get on, find out what the Kazon have fucked up when they disabled the self-destruct, which is probably the core power systems which power the shields. Okay, okay, we're going to run out of time if we continue this argument. Yeah. We... Okay, I'll... Uh, Amy, who, which side wins the point in this case? None of them. None of them? <laughs> <laughs> so it's still 1 0 for a Gene Wave fans. All right. 0 no, 0. 0 0, she reckons. Okay, we'll go. Really? Okay, the reason why. Yeah, go for it. Is because James had his chance to debate it out without um, Scarecrow's in interruption to begin with. Yep. When Scarecrow started his debate, James inter interrupted every time he started talking. Which yeah, just made the debate worse and worse. That, yeah, that's sort of a my bad for not technically moderating. So I am <laughs> fired for not doing my job. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm surprised Stuart didn't do something there. Well, Stuart's been quiet, so I could fire him for doing nothing. I think Stuart's hey, I'm, ju quiet. I'm just a fat guy, not my... It's not my job to moderate this. I'm Swiss. I'm neutral. <laughs> you also didn't respond when Dave fired himself. <laughs> oh, I got fired like free show, so. <laughs> yeah, I did technically sack him before the show. Not the point. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, moving along, we've got. First point went to 
David, second point, we'll call it a draw. Because it's sort of a, a moot point regardless. There's they started such... agreeing with each other. Yeah, it was sort plot. Of a... They had to do something to fuck them all over. Yeah, effectively. It was, it was oh no, look, the, the Wibbly Warbler isn't warbling the Wibbly anymore. Let's go fly away. And that was what happened. Yeah, boom. Yeah, boom. Typical problem of Voyager is bad writing. They could have come up with something, so, you know, they just got lazy and slapped this on. Yeah. That's why it looks like Janeway is evil. Yeah. So, I just don't look, think, uh, the I problem... I don't think a captain, but I don't think she was evil. She was just the wrong person for the job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah, kind of sounds very really relevant, same. but it's still villainy if you're doing wrong things from incompetence. Yeah. Rather than uh, wrong thing for evil reasons. Would it be more evil to be doing things because you you don't know what you're doing, or is it more evil to be Palpatine? I'd use in series reference use Seska as an example. I don't believe she ever made a bad call. Actually, she suggested alliance with Kazon. Apart from being a Cardassian spy who's also cheaper than some girls I know in the Brisbane cosplay community? Yeah, okay, actually let's half, that alone. <laughs> half of the, this is this is trying to prove a point that Janeway is evil because she's incompetent. That's the reason probably because David had point actually. Uh, sh this is uh, desperation on my hands. <laughs> He's about to win. Uh yeah, Seska, Seska is Cardassian spy, yes, but half of the Maki crew is Federation spy. As for the cheapness... Actually, only, only one. Federation spy in the Maki crew was one, Tuvok. The, yeah, Tuvok, the Vulcan. And why the hell do they not see that as a plant? He's a freaking Vulcan! <laughs> uh, They're not bright sparks. Okay. Just okay. look at them, they're just dumb. Hey, they got fooled by Neelix, damn it! <laughs> if you get fooled by Neelix, you're dumb. That's a fair point. Just See the valid call on that one. <laughs> that guy. See, <laughs> the only thing he was good at was a cork, and even then his food sucked. See the. Uh, no, he wasn't a good cook. The he way nearly... better than fucking than fucking K rats. <laughs> okay, you two can debate that later. Yeah. Okay. Um. See the way I look at Janeway. This is just how I see Janeway. I see Janeway more as a scientist she's there wow. she analyzes a scenario and in some cases she over analyzes a scenario um well, there's many many chances in the early seasons that i remember where she could have done something which would have helped them get closer to the alpha quadrant but she decided against it because of different oh, look. rules and things a quantum singularity let's go look at that yeah I'm gonna touch it. <laughs> <laughs> gonna so what? She's here as a two-year-old. <laughs> this is pretty much is. I mean, she gets freaking yeah. gets herself stuck in a time loop for Christ's sake in so like she's third a episode. Toddler. <laughs> she's yeah. a toddler in the adult woman's body. Okay, that explains everything. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, in honesty, Dave is actually right with how she acts as a, being a scientist. She was science trained. The science chain going through up through the ranks until she got chosen for captain. And then they gave her a science vessel. Obvious reasons. That's they just put a scientist you... in control of a science ship. Suddenly, that the science is... ship is, is now having to act as a tactical. It doesn't really work. The whole yeah. dictomony of the different trainings comes out there. Yeah. So now, on the other hand, it was Picard. the only scientist ever to be captain on a TV show named Star Trek. Yes, I realized that uh, the crusher lady, the crusher, uh, was actually captain, but she's like a medical officer and she has breach experience. So. Yeah, yeah it's, it, she wasn't sort of the, the, the main sort of character captain, if you know what I mean. That was always Picard. Yeah. She was captain every now and again, but she wasn't sort of the main thing. Anyway, we've got... Uh, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that. We've got ten minutes left, so it's just about time for us to start the news. News guy, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> I'm over Is that the real? shit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should put a, maybe I should get Doc to put a Voyager up, the Voyager AMV on during the break of one of the upcoming anime. Oh no 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 no! no. I, I love Voyager. You two arguing is pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. Aren't you ever supposed to be a Jedi? Calm yourself, boy. Mm. Okay. I'm a grey. I'm a grey knight. Anyway. Go falling to the dark side now, man. Anyway, it's it's time for the news. It's time for the no 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 news. That so reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, do it. <laughs> you know I have my I have my deck next action anyway. Off to the news, starting with DC. Superman has a new power and a new costume. God damn it! Costume okay. blog superpower. Who who hasn't seen the news about what the superpower is? Me. Uh, I do know some vague information. It's some sort of advanced laser vision or something. No, 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 no. it is no. something way cooler. For they those gave... who don't want to know what it is, now is your one and only chance to yeah. start <laughs> humming really, really, really loudly. <laughs> Spoilers galore. Superman's new power. He can he can unleash the energy stolen in every single one of his cells to create a solar flare that will wipe anything up in a quarter mile radius. So effectively... A nuclear explosion is his new power. Yeah, effectively he turns himself into a nuke and then ha quite happily walks away afterwards. Yes. Fuck Why not? No, no. There, is a there is a downside to this. For the next 24 hours he becomes human. There's so... your way to kill him off, Lex. Yeah, so think of it this way. It is effectively, for those who watched Danny Phantom, the same as the ghostly whale. <laughs> So no, that's what I call a killer fart. Yeah. I remember one of my friends is doing a Danny Phantom cosplay. Wow. I, All right. I actually haven't watched Danny Phantom yet. Alright, moving on. Moving on. I think we may have recovered this, but so, oh well. Live action Teen Titans characters have been revealed. Yeah. Meh, next. <laughs> Alright, now this one I'm not so thrilled on. Netflix developing a live action Legend of Zelda TV series. Oh god. Yeah. That one not work. How does that even. What? <laughs> so they want the show to be in I will link as... you. I will link you the advertisement for Japanese uh, live action version of Zelda and you will understand why I mean no! Oh no, no. Just the way that they want to do the show is bad. They want, to, they want it to be envisioned as a Game of Thrones for a family audience. And no. What? Fuck! That! Um, can I just say something here? No! My brain Hel hurts. Hello, <laughs> Murphy! What can go wrong with this picture? Oh, God. Anyway, moving right moving along. along. Now, this is really cool. A shelling company to make Astro Boy movie. So. What the hell is that noise? I have no idea. I, I, so, the Amy's moving the laptop again, again. Probably. Probably. So, the Australian animation studio behind the Lego movie are going to make a live-action uh, superhero movie based on um, Astro Boy. Okay, would someone tell me where this place is? I'm going over there with a shovel tomorrow. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! We, we need to save- Lego movie was good! Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. David, we need to shave, save the shovel for Stuart. I thought yeah. we already discussed this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 20 of them. One is earmarked for Stuart. Excellent. Oh, God. Is it a diamond shovel? Because they dig faster. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft reference, folks. <laughs> Alright. Uh... Move, moving along. Spaceballs 2, the search for more money is going to happen. That, that I'm... Is... That been... could be interesting. <laughs> I've been I'm looking... conflicted on this one because I love like the original, but uh, considering the latest uh, rip-offs, sorry, they're not sequels, they're rip-offs, basically. Uh, uh, so, I am i don't have high hopes. Yeah, it's Spaceballs, even if they fuck it up, it will still be funny. Yeah. Funny! See, my, see, I'm conflicted. Have you I'm, seen, I'm, I'm by any chance, have you seen Bruce Space Brothers 2000? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! That's a sequel. Now, now, children, behave. Whoa! I... Blues Brothers is <laughs> a special a place in my heart. Does, did, did somebody squeak? Yeah, I heard a squeak. Was that Amy? <laughs> Stuart, did you squeak? <laughs> I think it was Amy because she's giggling. Because she's giggling. I'm I'm still blaming Stuart because I can. Yeah. So, so, so I've, I've got mixed feelings on the Spaceballs movie simply because Mel Brooks has done some batshit crazy stuff since. Yes. 
Yeah, the second yeah, the does edition bring of... Oh, just... Zeros. The stuff that Mel Brooks has done, wow. I'm just leaving that alone. Other than that, I look forward to the new Space Balls. I think... Even... Like, I agree with... I agree with Scarecrow. Even if it's shit, that means it's gonna be good, because... <laughs> It's better when it's shit. Yeah, exactly. It's like comb I mean, the desert. You get need a giant it comb to out. be smart kind of shit for it to be entertaining. Yeah, fair point. I fear... No, it doesn't. The only way they could screw Spaceballs up after Spaceballs 1 would be if they actually make it serious. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving moving right along. Stuart, you yes. have three minutes. Go. God. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's apparently a artificial uh, pioneer has embraced... Um, the idea of uploading memories into a living person. Uh, no. Downloading memories from a living person well, into a robot. Well, memories. But, yeah, sorry. And the current, the current AI level is the equivalent of getting all of your... It's Think of it like Resurrection in Caprica. What they do is they get all of your personal data from Facebook, all of your personal data from Twitter, all your personal data from all the different online sources they can find you connected to and upload it into an AI matrix to make a digital version of you based on what you've posted online. So effectively, it's just going to be an arsehole. Because everybody's an arsehole online. Oh great, if they did that with me, they're going to get a gung-ho military nut job who wants to destroy the world. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Anyway! Uh, they might actually may on. lead out perfectly through this <laughs> Quickly moving along! I was about to say, moving along! Go, go, go! Tori Higginson to guest star on Dark Matter. Amanda Tapping will direct. That's going to be awesome. Next, go. Uh, this is cool. Lego signs multi-million pound deal with BBC to create Doctor Who set complete with TARDIS, Daleks, and Cybermen. Thanks. Shoot hit cool. chills in time for Christmas. My, Thank my God. My sister would go mental be and love it. Because the, the so you can actually compile Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, and... No, B5 doesn't have it. No. I just but love Star the... Star Star like Stargate's got a block set. It's crap. Halo's got a block set, which is actually really, really good. Well, right. it was, but the new stuff's not that good. Doctor Who's yeah. car already got a block set, but it is the most horrible crap I've ever attempted to put together, and I've tried to put together no-name bloody Chinese crap. It's yeah. worse. I had to glue that damn Dalek saucer together, but damn it, I won. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And last but not least, going back to DC... DC is ending the New 52 comic book line. Why? We don't know, but as of June 3, they will they are getting rid of uh, New 52. Can I make a suggestion as to why they're doing it? Because yeah. they no one likes it. Wow. No, because no one's buying the damn thing. <laughs> so yeah. what's going to happen instead is that they're going to have 49. So they have 20 so they're going to keep 25 current comic books from New 52, and then they're going to make 24 new uh, la uh, series. Okay. Eight, eight of the new titles that have been announced so far is Batman Beyond, Cyborg, Dark Universe, Doomed, Harley Quinn Power Girl, oh god, <laughs> Red Hood Ars and Arsenal, Starfire, and We Are Robin. I'm guessing that We Are Robin will have the four Robins involved. That'd be fun! Why do I just... Why did, When you said the uh, Harley Quinn one... The Harley Quinn Power, Power Girl, Girl one. One. Why did I get an ice cold shudder down my spine? Because <laughs> it's Harley Quinn? Yeah. That wasn't it. I think it was more the Power Girl part. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we're on our last minute. So, as such, the final minute music is playing. Uh, now is the chance for everyone to say their goodbyes. So... I will... Don't forget to check out the Safe Sci-Fi Facebook page. We've got all sorts of cool stuff happening on there. Um, we've just worked out who our chief medical officer is going to be on the ultimate evil ship, which is going to be a Borg Queen, but yeah, that won't go wrong. Anyway, uh. the, this week is Ships AI, so jump on there, comment your um, early choices, and Boy. everybody else. Make sure it's evil. Make sure it's evil. It has to be evil <laughs> and from a live action. How? There how, is evil version of Holly How? So. How? Yeah, Danny Jackson's, Danny Jackson's, Jackson's AI just... and Andromeda. <laughs> Yeah. Al, 2001 Space Odyssey, Al. So anyway, 20 seconds, say your goodbyes, go, David, go. Bye guys, have a good week. Stuart. See you next week. Amy. Bye all. James. No. Drop out. Support Voyager. <laughs> Die. <laughs> okay, see, see you guys later, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Catch you next time.
Catch you next time. Catch you next time. Catch you next time.